Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sujata Dhar. I will be briefly summarizing the poster, Systems Genetics of Hepatocellular Carcinoma, Challenges, talking about the HCC system from different perspectives and challenges. So let me start with the genetical aspect. Factors such as alcohol consumption, smoking, infections such as hepatitis B and C viruses, and other genetic factors results in constitutive cytokine expression and recruitment of immune cells leading to inflammatory environment. This further generates oxidative stress by releasing reactive oxygen species and nitric oxide leading to gene mutation and polymor polymorphism. So now, what are the challenges here? The first being genetic variability prone to disease environmental factors such as age, race, etc. Many SNPs are in the susceptibility loci, making it difficult to prioritize variants contributing to the disease. So, have we considered genetic testing or using phosphoproteomic assays to classify patients based on different pathway activation signal? Next, the epigenetics. Epigenetic mechanisms include RNA editing, DNA methylation, histone modifications, etc. While the global hypomethylation causes disturbance in the methylated regions of the genome, leading to the genome and chromosomal instability, the promoter hypermethylation influences mainly tumor suppressor genes. Further, moving to histone modification, which includes histone methylation, acetylation, phosphorylation, etc. Among these, histone methylation seeks attention as it leads to tumor suppressor gene silencing. Now, why epigenetics is explored now? Mainly owing to its reversible nature, which can be used as therapeutic targets. Speaking of challenges, well, it would be reactivation of epigenetically silenced tumor suppressor genes. Can we target epigenetic events in a non-specified way rather than in a specified manner? Keeping the challenges in mind, let me move on to the non-coding RNAs. These include miRNAs and long non-coding RNAs. Certain miRNAs act as oncogenes by affecting biological processes, while others act as tumor suppressor genes affecting biological processes as well. Transfecting miRNA mimicking molecules using nanoparticles have been shown to be highly specific to target HCC cells. Challenges here are the expression profile of miRNA in HBV patients differs from that of HCV patient. So how do we actually come up with a common platform in spite of these differences? How to better understand the role of circulating miRNA in tumor microenvironment and tumor immune evasion? What other ways to deliver miRNA to the HCC cells can be found? Having said that, now let's move on to long non-coding RNAs. They can be used as biomarkers owing to their detection in the body fluids such as urine and plasma, similar to circulating miRNAs and show highly cell and tissue specific expression. As it is being explored recently, what next? How better can we characterize long non-coding RNAs in terms of structure and functions in order to devise better strategies? What model or approach can be used to define the functional areas of long non-coding RNA as the single sequence is not possible to predict one? The third aspect, is the therapeutics. So it includes generalized treatments, which deals with patient's symptotic status and conditions, and they involve early stage treatments, intermediate stage, and advanced stage treatments. The other includes the modern treatment, which has an array of drugs assigned to regulate definitive systematic pathway regulation, which has the use of small molecule antibodies such as definitive and monoclonal antibodies, such as trastuzumab to target molecules. 
Modern treatments also include gene therapy such as immune gene therapy, anti-angiogenic therapy, suicide gene therapy, etc., and various other combination therapies. The challenges, although the BCLC, the Barcelona Clinic Liver Cancer Staging System is recommended, yet there is still a need to establish a standard for classification of the stages or to come to a consensus owing to its biological heterogeneity and the nature of each patient. What other challenges here? I would stress on the need for comparative genomic analysis between human HCCs and model organisms to validate novel oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes, to really narrow down studies to capture the key features such as genomic instability, and fibrotic microenvironment in accelerating the testing of agents prior to moving to clinical trials. There is a need to fully assess the susceptible genetic element in different population studies, a higher need to use the high resolution approaches or to come up with one for detailed genome analysis to clearly annotate samples and then a requirement of molecular targeted therapeutic options based on etiology and the activation of different pathways in different patients, which may lead to more personalized treatments. Last but not the least, understanding cancer or HCG from the above mentioned events may help us to find avenues to combat cancer. I would like to conclude by thanking the members from BioFluz and Dr. Sylvia from IPAN for the poster contribution and Lab Roots for organizing this wonderful conference. Thank you and have a great day.